Hey, Carriage Returners, thanks for returning. See what I did there? Uh, I'm actually on a day off, it's Sunday. I'm having a, a, a bit of a, a relaxation day uh, and I'm having a little bit of a ponder as to how the business has gone uh, since starting it just recently. Uh, it's gone extremely well um, and it hasn't gone in the direction I expected it to. I have, uh, I've picked up some entertainment technology clients as you'd expect because that's the industry that I've worked in for 20 years. But I have such a diverse range of clients that I've just picked up by word of mouth and the like. Um, I'm working with some luxury log cabins which are fascinating. I, I, I know it doesn't sound it but trust me, I've seen them. It's amazing. Um, I'm doing a project where I'm tracking the build of a house which is being built over about 18 months in Cheshire. Um, large, very expansive place with uh, swimming pools and so on. And we're going to um, use some specific software which I'll tell you about in a minute which uh, we're hopefully going to be able to track the evolution of this project. One of the things I've found interesting and a, and a little bit of a challenge is that as you've probably worked out, I'm building this business around video journalism and video blogging and I have to put myself in front of the camera. Now, yeah, it seems obvious, but when you do, it kind of makes you very self-conscious. And in the first few pieces that I did, I was kind of very, you do that, have that big insecurity thing where you think, oh, will people like it? Will, will, will they like what I'm saying? Will they enjoy it? But this week, I've really just had this thing where I've gone, do you know what? I don't really care anymore. It, 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 everything on the, the internet's free now. You know, you're not paying for this. If you're not watching it anymore, then that's fine. If you're still watching it, that's fantastic. Um, if you're not watching it anymore, then your mother's really ugly. But I just think it's it's a very strange thing when you put yourself in front of the camera instead of behind it. It's a bit like moving from being the lighting guy or the sound guy in a live event to sticking yourself on the stage. And it's like, I kind of liked hiding behind all that equipment. It was a lot easier. Um, today, I'm going to try and use a piece of software. I think it's called FPV Camera. Uh, I dug around and found it on the internet yesterday and I'm both excited and terrified at the same time about using this. Effectively, it's a piece of software that it allows you to pre-plan a mission in a kind of Google Maps type environment. And then what it does is it lets you put in focus points and hopefully what happens then is you can get these really great shots. It's very easy with a drone to just keep flying it forward over things. It's great, you get some good shots. And effectively, you can put the drone up and it pretty much looks good, whatever you're filming. But I wanted to do something a bit more controlled with a little bit more sideways movement, maybe tracking past things and have the camera track the object at the same time. Now, that's very hard to do. Um, and this software helps me do it. It'll also help me with the project in Cheshire because that project, what I'm hoping to do is to return over a period of 12 months, maybe every one month or so, and just capture how things have changed. And I want to do exactly the same shot so you can see it each time that it evolves. The problem is doing that manually is nigh on impossible. So this piece of software lets you use a sort of Google Maps type environment. You can go in and place POIs uh, and focus points, and then you put in waypoints, and then you effectively get great shots, which is the exciting bit. The terrifying bit is you also effectively hand over control of your rather expensive quadcopter to an app on your phone. So let's see how it goes. If there's a shot of me sitting in the driver's seat crying my eyes out in about two hours, you know it didn't go well. Let's go and give it a go. So this is Edgeworth. This is where I grew up. This is the outskirts of Edgeworth and we're heading towards um, that church there actually is where my mother works. But, yeah, we're going to turn down the lane now to go to my parents' place. Um, this is a little lane called Hob Lane, and as you can see, it's not exactly massive. Um, I, uh, I'm not going to be getting the RV down here, that's for sure. Um, walked up and down here many, many times over the years on my way to school or cycled down it as a child. Um, now I'm trundling down it at the grand old age of 52 and it looks exactly the same. Uh, they've got some new street lights, not that it makes a lot of difference because it's, it's, it just means you can see the potholes. And this is it. This is, uh, this is where I grew up. When I first lived here, there was about three cars here. Um, now you can't get parked for love nor money, so uh, let's go and see how my folks are. It actually looks like they're not in, but uh, anyway. I didn't, I didn't call them, so it's a bit impromptu. Let's, uh, let's see if there's anybody in, shall we? Say hello, Mum. Hello. hello. This is my mum helping me set up my kit, and I'm going for a walk. I'm just... What, what are you having, Mum? We're having pulled pork, slow-cooked barbecue pulled pork. But it's cooked on gas six, which seems very 
very hot for me for something slow cooked. Anyway, we'll see what happens. Let's it's, see. It's supposed to end up like that. Can you see it? Well, let's find out later, <laughs> shall we? Right, I'm gonna. Oh, that's Mum dropping a dinner. Um, okay, and I've actually completely destroyed my parents' kitchen. Look, I've got drones and. Also, the mum's going to try and cook without setting fire to all my equipment. I guess that's uh, probably the plan here. Oh, here we go. Here's my father. Well, this is my father. This is my dog. Hello, Megster. This is my father. <laughs> He's just been out with the dog. This is actually my dog. This is Meg. This is my dog. But she used to live in London with me. Now she lives here because she didn't like living in London. Well, it's not that she didn't, it just wasn't fair on her. street back then it's changed a lot since I was a kid there used to be walls all the way up it and there was all backyards and everybody used to go in through the back doors nobody ever went through the front doors um, and that's it but it's weird because it's almost it's almost as if two rows of houses fell off the back of an aeroplane um, and landed here and the reason why is because there used to be a mill in the bottom of where the reservoir is uh, and these were the workers houses uh, the house on the left over here it was the foreman's house which is the big one and the other ones were the workers houses yeah. there used to be a road here and you can't see the cobbles anymore but it used to wind its way down through the trees and at the bottom where the reservoir is that's where the mill was um, and that's where uh, where all the workers used to walk down in the mornings i guess um, when it was still a functioning mill when you live somewhere and there's only about five kids for about five miles you tend to get together and this tree here is where we used to get together at night. We used to spend hours sitting in this tree. We used to sit in there and carve our names and, and uh, this was our meeting place. Um, an occasional smoking place, but don't tell my mum. I came up here really to test out this software today, just in an open space so that I didn't kill anybody. Um, but I just thought I'd give you a bit of an insight into, into Entwistle and, and me as a child. Um, parts of history, uh, moved back from South America with my parents from Colombia in 1969 and uh, this is where my parents decided to settle not back in the Midlands which is actually where they're from and uh, my mum got a job teaching at the local school my father got a job teaching at Bolton Institute of Technology which is now Bolton University and this is pretty much where I grew up it was a strange place to grow up really as a kid in some respects because it is quite remote maybe not by American standards but by British standards it's pretty remote it's a very simple life it's got a certain naivety about it 
and uh, innocence, which was probably quite good growing up as a child. But uh, when I got to teenage years, I really fancied a bit of rock and roll, really fancied a bit of Manchester nightlife. So that's where I went. And then I went to Newcastle for 18 years. I lived in London. I've lived all over the place. I haven't been here for 30 years, uh, apart from to visit my parents. Because my mother taught just about everybody's children in this village for decades. Um, I can't walk through the village without somebody saying hello and half the time I don't even know who they are. So sorry if that was you. Um, yeah. It's a great place. The history of it. Is based around the mill, which used to be in the bottom. The reservoirs are very famous now, but before these reservoirs were ever here, the running water that went through this valley drove a mill, and that mill, no mill, is now actually under the water over there. Um, they destroyed the mill and flooded the valley um, sometime beginning of last century. You know, it was, uh, well, it was a bit later than that. The reservoirs had two levels. It had an original level, and then they had still had the mill, and then they raised it an, an even higher level, which engulfed the mill, uh, so we lost that. Um, but the infrastructure that's here, everything that's around here, the train station, the pub, you do think, well, why is there a train station and a pub in the middle of nowhere? Well, it's left over for when there was a community here that was in running a mill in, underneath that water there. Um, and, uh, yeah, coming back says, um, I'm a bit older now, I've done London, I've done big cities, I've travelled a lot, been around the world. It's nice to come back here and I wish I'd come back a couple of weeks earlier when the trees were just turning. Uh, now it's quite stark and, and, and bare but uh, it's still beautiful and uh, yeah, it's nice to come back. It's nice. But there you go, just a bit of an insight into uh, where I grew up while I came and tested some software which incidentally went extremely well. 